Hey you guys, it's your girl Josh coming back to you from Real Takes. Today I'll be doing a review to Siren Episode 10, Aftermath. This is the season finale. This was a great send-off for the first season. I've enjoyed this entire season. I'm so happy a year ago when I came across the trailer for this. Didn't know too much about it. I'd heard it would be on Freeform. Didn't know too much about the characters. I'm familiar with um, Elaine, who plays um, Ren, prior to her doing episode of Game of Thrones, so when I found out she was the lead. And then, of course, the guy who plays Ben, I was aware of him because he did a movie called Fifth Wave. So when I saw those two particular um, actors, I said, okay, this might be something interesting. And then seeing the trailer had me even more interested. So it was just unfortunate we had to wait a whole year, but it was worth the wait. And just the entire season up until this last episode was done very well. I'm excited because it did get picked up for a season two, so that makes me very happy. That means a lot of people liked it, and that's a good thing. Now, moving into the, this episode. Now, as it's called Aftermath, and Aftermath it was. Now, of course, you know, the situation with the two uh, new mermaids that we were introduced to, the male mermaid and the other female mermaid, and then, um, of course, the situation at the end of the episode where Xander shoots to try to kill um, the male mermaid, he ends up in the kidding Donna so basically we start the episode off where Donna is basically having to be cared to of course Alden Decker is called he comes in he tries to use some of the serum that he was using from the stem cells to help that would help the situation whichever now from there you kind of see all of them huddled together of course you know there's some friction between Ben and Maddie because she just feels like like I stated before that the communication is not there they don't really do things as a team but she doesn't feel like they're there it's like he's kind of doing his own thing you know he's gone rogue when it comes to certain decisions and all that and some of them can be not well thought out now from there of course Sheriff Bishop has had um, Xander locked up it is um, the day, the day after, whichever. So it shows him telling him, you need to get, just do better. Your judgment, all that. You could have been locked up. This could have been worse. Granted, they're making it seem like he just shot Nilly Willie and all that. And he might have got clipped or whatever and all that. Not really letting the rest of the um, police department of them know that actually he shot Donna because then that would ask and cause more questions to be wanting to be answered. So in the midst of that, you know, it kind of shows, you know, first, like I stated, you know, Alden Decker's there to help whichever, and then the little arguments between Maddie and Ben, whichever, and from there, you see other little scenes where it shows his father, Ted, and Elaine Powell talking to their, um, actual um, maid talking about the situation where she was on a date and Sheriff Bishop told her to stay inside. That's when they were having a showdown, you know, the street fight with the female and then the male mermaid. So he's like, you need to figure out what's going on. So Elaine says, you need to go and talk to, you know, Dale, that's his first name, uh, Sheriff's name, and figure out what's going on because the town, they use that community to bring in tourists and it's like, it's going to mess up, you know, what they're trying to do for the town. People think this is not a place that's safe. So of course he shows up and he's asking questions, what's going on, whatever. He's like, they're going to have a town hall meeting, whichever, you know, meet with the council, whatever, so you can figure out what's going on. So he can ask them questions so they can feel more safe. Now from there, of course, it shows Ren and Donna having their moment. She's bonding and trying to feel like she's getting better. and She's just worried about her, whichever. So from there, it kind of shows, you know, the situation and it shows that she's not getting better she starts to you know her you know heart rate is not right you know she's burning up and they're getting worried and of course he's like this must have been the stem cells he took from her in transition when she was the mermaid so it's kind of having a reverse effect so from there that's when they're like okay just go she runs like let's go i'm just going to talk to her because she can kind of see the writing on the wall ben lets her know that she's not getting better they can't take her to the hospital because they won't know what to do and it's not like Alden Decker should, can be with her, so to speak, to let the government officials, because they blame them for what happened to their team that was out there that got killed and slaughtered before the situation happened with the guys and his captain, you know, Sean McCurl being killed himself. So from there, she eventually comes out and she does notice, you know, all of them standing around and they ask and she's just like, you know, Donna's gone. So that's when they have to make the decision. Of course, Alden Decker, he's devastated because he has a moment with Ben prior to them getting together and he was like you know i need her to sing whichever now we said earlier in the season um she had her moment where ren had sung to ben and kind of you know put him in some sort of trance same thing with donna when she was you know submerged in that tank she couldn't go anywhere she would kind of you know 
watch what was going on around her. She saw Alden Decker's character kind of take a like a liking to her. So she had that song that she used you now, like they stated, it could be considered, you know, in a lovely way or sometimes it can be considered where it can be used as um, lethal against a person, which can make them do certain things where, you know, it can cause them to harm themselves. Now, with Alden Decker, once he finds out Donna's gone, he's devastated and he leaves. He takes his coat and he just starts out of the place. He's just freaking out because he tells Ben, he says, I need her to sing to me again whatever and it was like you know you need to you know calm that down he's like you know you don't understand you don't understand what i mean whatever what about ren whichever he says you know if she doesn't sing to me whatever i saved her i helped her it's like you know i need to hear it otherwise i'm gonna lose my mind so that right there you know antennas go up when he says it like that because it makes you wonder you know this way of hearing the song all the different ways it could affect a person differently. So that was just intriguing to see when he says that because every time he's around, was he just act a certain way, like like a lost little puppy at times, just you know, very sad or whatever. You know, not the serious person at the beginning of the season where he was all about getting the project, the agenda done to get what he needed from her. You know, injecting her against her will. You know, so it was like his overall demeanor has changed. So of course, moving on. It shows a scene where, of course, like I stated, um, Sheriff's on his way to the council and he's called because, of course, then Alden Decker ends up taking his own life. He goes down to, you know, the waters and all that and he drowns himself. So he commits suicide. So then that's when he ends up missing the council meeting with the town, whichever. And then from there. You know, it shows a part where Sheriff, you know, Dale, you know, calls his daughter to let her know what happened. He says, isn't this one of these government officials you said you were working on? And that's when they realized because, of course, Wren tells her, you know, when Ben helped me, you know, he wanted me to do something for him after the party, which was the funeral gathering at the end where she he asked her to sing. And, of course, Maddie's kind of perplexed because she's just like sing and that's when she asked Helen, she said, well, you read the books, you understand what they're talking about, whichever. Now, um... Prior to that, they decide um, what they're going to do with Donna's body. Now, Helen has a special place, and that's kind of when you learn more. And I was glad because I was wanting to know more about Helen throughout the season. And I love how we finally get to know more. She finally tells a story of Charles Poundhall and the mermaid. Now, from there, you find out that they have a child and a child is within transition in between. And they felt the people in the community in the town would think that the child is an abomination. So... They took the, the child somewhere, whatever, where it could grow and not be harmed. And from their ancestors, after ancestors had grown, whatever, and also, of course, Helen is one eighth of a mermaid, whichever. So she does not, she can't transform. She doesn't have those abilities, but, you know, she does, is a part of it. That's why when Maddie says, did you realize? She's like, yeah, I could sense that. And if you watched her in a couple of the first couple of episodes when she actually had met Helen at the beginning, you could see how she kind of took a shine to her, but she didn't know all of the story. So she was learning. Also the story she told Ben, in the most recent episode, episode nine, was not fully fact. That was what her people, you know, her you know, mermaids had told her, but that wasn't all the whole story. Now, when she was on land, Charles Ponder had came across her. When he finally does, you know, confront his father about the things you weren't keeping from me, because he finds out that Helen is, you know, related to him. And there was a scene during the funeral when she's like, you know, you know, we're family, which is this, 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 whatever and all. Come to find out her, you know, mother or their ancestor was part of a prostitute or broth or whatever. So, you know, people would look upon that like it's a bad thing, whichever and all that, you know, our family's this, you know, Charles had a lot of secrets. So there's still more stuff we probably might not know, but this is the kind of laying the foundation to learn, learn a bit more about the Pound Hall, you know, family, you know, the clan, all the dynamics of what they discussed for the book, the slaughters, all the things that Helen talked about when she had um, confronted Ben early on in the season. So I just love that we're learning a little bit more. And now we know a little bit more about Helen, which is nice. So moving forward, flash forward, when she finally lets Maddie know that she sunk him, they're like, we got to find Ben. So of course it shows scenes in between with Xander and, um, Calvin and him wanting to move and uh, move um, Janine in and whatever. And at first he's kind of hesitant, like, you know, what's this all about? But unbeknownst to Calvin, um, he had a little trace back in the day before they started dating. Instead of being honest, 
he didn't say anything. Now, here we go. Granted, the situation with Ben not being honest about him knowing about Murray's, it's not the same thing, but the fact remains is you're not being honest. You knew you slept with her. She's awkward because she doesn't want to do it. She finally decides to tell him why she doesn't think that's a good idea. So, of course, Calvin's in his feelings, so he doesn't want nothing to do with um, Xander right now. And Xander's like, come on, that I didn't know this. you all were going to work out, whatever. So they did, and they wanted to. And once he decided to, to take that next step, he should say, I got to speak to you something about it. I don't want us to you know, have her move in and not know what's going on because that would have really been awkward. So he kind of brushes him off. He leaves. And of course, they're having their little moment where they're not getting along. So from there, you know, it's just a situation where they're trying to give us some more, you know, story with Xander and um, Calvin. Now with Calvin, he goes still at the bar. He's sulking or whatever. Then he takes it upon himself, which is a dumb move on himself because that just opens up more to go into hopefully season two, which is a good thing. Don't get me wrong, but just him hothead at times. He decides to make a call to um a television company to speak to a reporter about the situations and the goings on of the mermaids. So basically we're going to see if somebody comes to investigate and learn more, whichever, which puts people in a, a very, not a good place for the people to dig in and find out more stuff, whichever. So that's kind of Calvin's part to play in the season finale. Xander and him have a moment where he tried, he basically lets him know he's sorry. He should have been honest. And they kind of have a hug, whichever and all. And you can tell Calvin kind of, Still hesitant, but then he's kind of thinking because now, you know, he went and did something that I think he later is going to regret. But we'll see, you know, the 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 triple of ripple effects of what's going to happen next first and foremost so i'm kind of looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with that as well secondly um it shows the scene where they get to the place of business and the guy who works there with maddie and ben says he went off because he needed to get some fresh air he just wanted to be alone and that's when ren and maddie know that's not a good sign so of course it shows him on the boat he hears the siren call and he dives into the water thinking that's ren it's not ren come to find out it's no one actually down there because at first I thought there was going to be a scene with either the other female, you know, mermaid or the guy and try to, you know, hurt him. But it's actually he's just hearing it all in his mind. And of course, Ren shows up because at first you think he's about to drown because all of a sudden he stops kind of moving. He's just lying there in the water. So she grabs him. And he's like, you know, what were you doing down there? And she's like. That was not me, Ben. I didn't do it. I feel so guilty. She's like, I didn't know this was going to do this to you. And she's holding him, having that, you know, human moment with him where she feels so bad that she didn't realize my son would do this. She thought it was for good and didn't realize. And he says it to her like, you know. It's, it's really not her fault. Poor thing doesn't realize she didn't know the song would do this. Now that she realizes what happened with Alden Decker and what Donna did, and now she just realizes this is not good. So, of course, it shows a scene where Maddie and Ben are discussing and talking and they're, you know, she's like, you know, why would you do that? Why would you go in there? Whichever. And he's thinking she was down there. He's like, you know, you see what happened to Alden Decker. She explains to him what happened. He's just like, oh my goodness. He's like, you know, I can't you deal with this. You know, we're not communicating. We're not doing this. I said, yeah, I think it's best I'm moving in with my dad. So of course he's like, you know, he's devastated about it. And he just turns to her. She's walking away and says, you know, I love you. And she's like, you know, I love you back. But she said, but they need a break. So that's kind of how that ended. And then it shows a scene with um, uh, Ted Poundhall and Dale talking about how he needs to explain himself because he didn't show up at the council meeting, whatever. And he's like, you need to give me something, go back. He's like, I don't think you would understand if I told you. And he's like, try me. And from there, we don't know what he told him because we don't see a scene with him anymore. So hopefully we'll get to have more of an understanding as time goes on. Secondly, one thing to bring up with Elaine, now that Alden Decker is gone, what's going to happen with the research of the stem cell to help her walk? I'm curious how they're going to play that part out. If he hooked her up with some other people that's already been tied into it so she can still get the work because I would like to see them work that storyline through where she actually is able to walk again because after you know I don't know how much more with her being involved so much so you know what she would be doing besides what we normally see with her you know you know interacting with some of the people in the town and of course trying to have a better relationship and bond with Ben you know and of course her husband because I think that she if she was walking, whatever, and all that, things might be a little different, and all that, because you'd almost feel like he's only, you know, home, you know, doing the normal thing with her, whichever, when, you know, he's out there probably doing other things, because you can tell at the beginning of the season, she feels he's probably, you know, try, you know, having his little trace with women, all because he can't really be with her the way he would really want to be. That's just my thoughts on that. Now, secondly, last, closer to the end, it shows, of course, Ren shows up. 
And it's just so sad because she comes and she realizes, I'm not good for you. I can't be around you right now. I'm going to go stay with Helen. And then from there, you know, she has her mom with him and she's like, you know, he's like, be safe, whatever. And then you have a little moment where she does give him a kiss and she's like, bye, Ben, whichever. And you can tell you feel so bad because she feels guilty because she finds out that Ben and Maddie, you know, are not together right now. She's staying with her dad. So all this, you know, feels like it's taking the head to, yeah, I just need to stay with you. I'm going to live my life a certain way now because, you know, she's not going to go back in the water. And then also she makes a comment that she says that um, the other members are not going to look for her. Why do I feel like that's not true? But we'll see. Um, just just so sad because you can tell she really is starting to care for him and he's starting to care for her. And that's the part that's going to be so hard to conflict because I like him with Maddie, but then I want to see what could happen with, with him and Ren. And then I would, if that's the case, then I would like to see something happen with Xander and Maddie again, since we didn't get to see these things, being that he made that comment about what he's always liked about her. And she's like, you know, that was a long time ago, you know, and putting her, making her feel uncomfortable when he touched her face, whatever is episode, you know, nine. So we'll just have to see, I'm sorry, episode eight, excuse me. So we'll just have to see how that's going to pan out. But like I stated before season, the first season, done very well. I love the pacing of the story, learning more over the episodes, a little bit more watching Ren, you know, grow, evolve more on her human side, you know, not being as the same as Donna and the other two, the other two were so more ferocious. Donna kind of opened up a little bit. She wasn't as aggressive towards the end, but she still had more of that in her, but she caught on too little too late, but just enough that, you know, this is what ends up happening, you know, her getting, you know, hurt in a crossfire. But um, I, I look forward to seeing some other mermaids showing up. I feel like they're going to show up. They're not going to base the whole season of season two around just Ren. So I feel like with Calvin doing what he did, the investigator, you know, a reporter coming around asking questions, being nosy. Also, I feel like uh, Sheriff Dale um, Bishop, that one cop that works with her, is kind of hesitant to believe everything he's saying because a lot of people don't have the faith in him from what um, Ted said about things that he's been handling and all that. And these situations have been happening, escalating. You know, I'm curious about that. Also, like I stated in, in another review about um, the panel's other son, you know, I'm kind of iffy about him. I want to know if they're going to show more about him and his dynamic to bring to the table as well. And just seeing Ren and Helen going into season two, having a better bond her now knowing she can stay with somebody who can help her just get used to her every day she's gonna have a new job working you know and in, in her store that'll be nice to see her you know maybe meeting someone and seeing if you know ben's gonna be jealous and then that might show that he really has does have other feelings for her so many things that can happen so you know i'm not gonna go on anymore but i enjoyed this episode you guys comment below let me know which parts of you all enjoyed from the season finale and i look forward to season two i will be doing my my weekly review when that starts back up. So with that said, you guys, I will see you on the next review for season two. Let's talk to you then.